everyone. Uh, after that extensive uh, discussion, I would like to add a little more to this. Uh, this is about the performance of bituminous mixtures and I will be discussing about the rutting characteristics of bituminous mixtures. This is the outline of this presentation. I will discuss what rutting is all about and then the uh, results of our uh, dry rut wheel testing that is carried out, then the flow time and flow number testing that is carried out and the issues associated with these standard protocols and some of the uh, new protocols that we have tried uh, uh, which is the modified flow number test and a new creep and recovery test and finally the summary and conclusions. So as everyone is aware, uh, rutting is the longitudinal depression that we see along the wheel path and most of the time we see that there are humps formed on either side of this wheel path and uh, since the bituminous uh, pavement is made up of different layers, this deformation that you see at the top surface could be a deformation in any of these layers, the top bituminous layer even at the subgrade layer. Uh, and uh, what we have seen is that this depressions that we see on the pavement surface is due to major factors such as an increased number of axle loads and the high tire pressure per axle. Why rutting is significant or why rutting is peculiar is because uh, it is not a catastrophic failure or it is not something like an abrasion or wear, but it is a ductile failure, a failure that happens over a period of time uh, as the uh, payment service life increases due to repeated loading as well as due to creep loading. So in this study what we are discussing about is the deformations that we see in the bituminous concrete layer. I am not going to discuss about what happens in the pavement structure as a whole or what happens in the subgrade layer. So if I consider the asphalt concrete layer or the bituminous layer, uh, we know as per the design criteria it is a mix which is designed to have 7 to 8 percent air voids initially and due to traffic because of the repeated wheel loads, this will eventually have some densification and the material densifies to a 3 to 4 percent uh, air voids and at the same time you see that there is a shear flow of the material, you use the word shear flow for this flow of material that happens from the wheel path. So my rutting that I see is the combination of densification and shear flow and this kind of a behavior that happens in the material essentially follows a three stage creep response. That is initially when the air voids is high it will have a, a creep response or it will have a strain or deformation at a decreasing rate then this rate goes to a constant value and eventually it will start uh, deforming at an increasing rate. So this response is called a three stage creep response. Uh, when we consider this aspect in the payment design, as far as the Indian scenario is considered, as already discussed here, we design the payment as a multi-layered elastic system where the stress and strains are analysis as elastic payment and uh, the deformations for which we design the payment or the de deformation or distresses that are considered are one is a permanent deformation or rutting and the second one is a fracture in the bituminous layer, whereas uh, the deformation of the payment layer is not as such considered for the design, but it is mentioned that if you design your payment uh, material that is a bituminous layer as per the mode specifications, this rutting can be uh, eliminated or uh, reduced and uh, these are the typical resilient modulus values that are given and it is uh, stipulated that uh, a usage of a bituminous mix with uh, stiffer binders, the modified binders, etc. can help in uh, reducing the uh, deformations in the bituminous layers and these are the distress transfer functions that are given for uh, rutting which essentially uh, uh, re is related to the vertical compressive strain that comes on top of the subgrade layer. Whereas when we look at the mechanistic empirical payment design, uh, it starts with a lot of input data including the traffic, the foundation details that is the subgrade details, the climatic condition, the material properties all goes to a trial design. And in the trial design, the structural response models actually uh, relate uh, or uh, actually uh, find out what is the structural response. This is again based on a uh, elastic analysis and this structural response is actually related to the distress prediction models. Uh, these distress prediction models uh, 
determine the uh, dis uh, deformations in uh, deformations or distresses and once the criteria is met or the performance is met we stop the design or yes else we uh, change the trial design or we go for a better performing mixes. Here also it is an elastic uh, strain analysis is being carried out but plastic strain is mentioned as a function of the elastic strain. What is important as well as the mechanistic empirical payment design is that you consider the deformations of every layer including the HMA layer. So, I have just noted down the expression here the uh, uh, relation here for the uh, deformations in the HMA layer which you can see that uh, it is a function of site specific values as well as the material uh, parameters. So, coming to the rotting studies, if I want to study what happens or what is this rotting all about, uh, either I can go for a full scale field study or we can have test track studies or we can have an accelerated payment test study. This is as far as the rotting of the payment structure as a whole is considered. Whereas, if I want to study about the rotting of bituminous mixtures, we can have simulative test on bituminous mixtures or we can have an experimental investigation of the bituminous mixture according to the site conditions or it can be a model based study like empirical models or constitutive models can be developed so as to find what exactly happens in the bituminous mixture. So, in this particular uh, project what we have looked at is the simulative test on bituminous mixture so as to see whether we can uh, find the relation or find the uh, uh, performance of different type of binders used and also an experimental investigation as to see whether the entire rutting procedure can be or the rutting process can be captured. As far as the simulative test is concerned, it is actually a torture test. We basically simulate the traffic load on a slab or, or, or a specimen of the uh, mixture and this essentially helps us to find a comparison between the various mixes. There are different rut wheel testers available like French rut wheel, rutting tester, asphalt payment analyzer and so on. The one which is available at IIT Madras is the dry wheel tracker which has been used for the uh, testing of uh, bituminous mixtures. So, coming to the preparation of uh, sample for the laboratory testing, the uh, as already discussed we have uh, used two bituminous mixtures, one is the bituminous concrete grade 2 and the second one is the dense bituminous macadam grade 2 and the four binders I have noted them as PMBP that is a plastoma base, PMBE that is a elastoma base polymer then the CRMB and VG30 and for the rut wheel resting we have the press box samples and we have cut out 300 by 150 by 50 mm slabs for doing the uh, rut wheel testing and the specimens were cast at an air void of 6 plus or minus 0.5 percentage. And this is the experimental investigations we have carried out two tests which is the flow number and the flow time test where cylindrical specimens were cast again code out from the uh, press box specimens with 100 mm diameter and 150 mm height with an air void of 6 plus or minus 0.5. Now, coming to the uh, rut wheel testing, this dry rut wheel testing this is a apparatus where we have done using the uh, British standards. A 700 Newton load is applied through a rubber hose wheel of 200 mm diameter and 50 mm width. The speed we chose was 53 passes per minute, so it is actually a to and fro application of a load on the specimen and this is a maximum load and the minimum speed that is possible in dry wheel test so as to get the maximum effect on the material. The test was conducted at 50 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius for 30,000 passes and to do this testing the specimens of the set dimension were kept in this environmental chamber for 6 hours for conditioning so that the specimen reaches that particular temperature. And uh, in this rut wheel testing normally 15 local uh, profile measurements will be taken and an average will be taken as the rut depth. So, let us look at the dry wheel test results for a BC mix uh, from the specimen. Uh, what I have plotted here is the rut depth versus the number of passes 30,000 passes and this is how the performance goes. Uh, we see the least performance uh, performing one is the VG30 that is the maximum deformation has happened for VG30. Then it was crumb rubber modified binder then PMB elastoma and then PMB uh, plastoma. So, my plastoma uh, polymer modified binder was uh, performing the best. And now coming to the 60 degree test uh, the plastoma again outperformed every other type of binder whereas uh, the CRMB and PMB is there was a swap of uh, performance the CRMB performed better than the elastoma modified uh, binder and VG30 of course was the least performing one. Now, coming to the uh, test results of DBM mix 
again this is done at 50 degree and 60 degree Celsius. Uh, we see that the test results were consistent at both 50 and 60 degrees Celsius with PMDP that is a plastoma performing well then followed by elastoma then crumb rubber modified binder and finally VG30 that was the same uh, per performance at 60 degree as well. Now coming to the flow time and flow number test see as uh, discussed we need to have certain kind of a bituminous mixture test that will actually capture what is happening in the uh, uh, in the material over a period of time. So there are two types of tests that has been developed as part of the NCHRP project 919 which are called the simple performance test later named as asphalt mixture performance test and uh, actually three tests one is a dynamic modulus test which is already discussed by uh, Ms. Deepa. And the two tests that are related to the rotting performance of the mixture, the one is the flow time test and the second is the flow number test. In flow time test what is done is that the specimen is subjected to a constant free load over a period of time and we capture what is the strain that is happening. And the second one is the flow number test. In flow number test as you see here it is a dy dynamic load creep and recovery loading of 0.1 second have a loading is applied and then 0.9 seconds of rest period is given. This is repeated over a number of cycles and this term flow time and flow number is defined as the point where this tertiary stage starts. So what we define is that whenever it starts going to that tertiary stage we say that the material has failed. So in both these cases what you have to capture is the creep or the strain and it essentially has to follow a three stage creep response and the point where it starts to the tertiary stage is called the flow time or the flow number as the case may be. So let me first discuss the flow time test results on BC mixes. As I said this was done in a simple performance tester or the AMPT equipment. And the load that was applied was 600 kilopascal and also we have given a contact load of 10 kilopascal and the duration of the test was set as 20,000 seconds. We see the test results here this is in micro strain versus time the flow time test results and the performance this is the test results at 50 degree Celsius and this is at 60 degree Celsius. We see that at 50 degree Celsius the results are similar to what we have seen in our rut wheel testing whereas at 60 degree Celsius there was slightly uh, uh, really uh, uh, better performance or, or equal um, type of performance from PMB and CRMB uh, whereas PMB uh, plastoma uh, performed well as in any other case. Now coming to the flow time test results of DBM mix uh, as we can see uh, this again is the micro strain versus uh, time plot at 50 degree Celsius and 60 degree Celsius for the DBM mix. Uh, again PMBP out uh, that is a plastoma based one outperformed every other type of binder whereas CRMB and PMB has uh, more or less similar uh, performance or uh, at some places or s uh, during some duration one was better than the other. Again VG30 was the least performing one. Now uh, as I discussed flow time or flow number is that point where the material started shear deformation or started shearing off. Now there are various protocols but from which I can determine what is that point at which it started shearing and these protocols are named here like UTS 005 protocol, IPC, UTC protocol. In all these protocols what is done is that you just get the uh, strain rate and what is that strain rate at which it becomes minimum is called as a flow time value. So these uh, protocols actually differ in the way in which this differentiation is done and the smoothing of data is done. So if anyone wants you can just refer the report these, deta these methods are detailed in there. Uh, so uh, what we see is that when I try to find that flow time value using these different protocols, the different protocols is actually giving us different values. But the performance is more or less the same as we have seen in the, uh, in the strain uh, distribution whereas this flow determination of this flow time is a tricky issue here because every protocol is giving me a different value as the flow time value. Uh, now coming to the flow number test results have floated here the flow number test results. Uh, so as I said the flow number is a repeated creep and recovery test with a 0 0.1, 0.9 have a sign loading and recovery. So this is the test results at 50 degree BC and this is for BC at 60 degree Celsius and this is the test result at 50 degree for DBM and this is at 60 degree for DBM. Uh, again we have to determine what is the flow number value that is the number at which that is the number of cycle at which it started shearing off the tertiary stage is started. 
So again the four different protocols were used to find what is the uh, uh, flow number values and based on that the performance is uh, same as we have seen in the rut wheel testing or in the flow time testing with PMB P that the plastoma based uh, outperforming any other type of binder and this was the same results that we obtained for uh, the DBMX as well. So, so far I have discussed uh, about the rut wheel testing results, the flow time test results and the flow number test results and I think enough of contradiction with what Ms. Nivita has presented in the morning as far as the binder performance is concerned. Uh, now still we have seen, uh, I want to discuss about some of the issues, other issues associated here. When we look at the flow number testing, this is more uh, replicative of uh, or representative of what is happening in the field as compared to the flow time test. But the problem here is that what is the kind of load waveform that we have to give? As I discussed, what is uh, mentioned in the protocol is a 0.1 second Haversan and a 0.9 second rest period loading. But this kind of a loading is not able to capture any steady state loading as in the case of a flow time. So we have to look for some other load fame, load. Uh, waveform where you can have a steady state of loading. And the another aspect is that the duration of loading and unloading, whether I should go for a 0.1 second or 0.9 second is a matter of concern. And the next is the magna magnitude of the deviatoric stress and the temperature that you should use. Normally people will be interested in doing this test at a very high magnitude of deviatoric stress and at a very high temperature so that I can complete my test at a reasonably good time and I reach at that tertiary stage of the creep curve. But the problem is that when I do a test like that, it is not possible to differentiate the flow characteristics of two different mixes. Two different mixes will give me more or less the same amount of flow number value or a flow time value. Uh, this is the, uh, as per the protocol, you have to do the test at 600 kPa under unconfined conditions and 483 kPa for a test and un uh, confined condition as per ASHRAE TP79. Now again, another aspect is the confinement condition. All tests what, what we have done here is under unconfined condition because the protocol does not specify mandatorily that you have to do it at a confined condition. But it says that if you want you can do it at 35 to 207 kPa as per NCHRP 919, 919 project which was later improved to 69 kPa as per NCHRP 929 project. But in realistic condition, any material is under confined condition. So what is necessary is that any investigation to quantify the mechanical behavior should consider this influence of confinement as well. And another issue associated with flow time and flow number as I discussed is the post processing of the data. We had lot of uh, differentiation, numerical differentiation procedures available to arrive at that flow time or flow number which uh, were not able to arrive at one particular value. This was essentially because of the noise in data which is inevitable. So at IITM, uh, not as part of this project but using this material that is provided for this project, we have done two modifications for this uh, flow number test. One is a modified flow number test with the same uh, waveform as the Haversain waveform but we have reduced the stress level to 200 kPa and this was done at two confinement conditions of zero that is unconfined condition and a 200 kPa confined condition. Uh, this was done for 20,000 cycle or till a maximum actuator displacement of 15 mm. Again it was done at 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. This was done, uh, we, have, uh, we have just on a trial basis, we have done it for uh, CRMB and BG30 mix. And what was different in this case is that uh, thanks to IPC Global, we were able to capture the entire data. Whereas in the case of the existing protocol, it was only giving us the uh, irrecoverable strain at the end of each cycle. But in this uh, protocol, we were able to uh, capture the entire data so that we will know what exactly is happening through the entire uh, loading and unloading parade. So this is how the data was captured. This is the total data. I have put a zoomed version here. So this is how we see uh, the data uh, is and from which we can capture the uh, maximum deformation and the irrecoverable deformation at every load cycle and this is how it is, uh, the data is collected. Now coming to the next modification that we have tried out, as I mentioned, this Haversine loading does not have a constant creep 
stage. So we have looked into another protocol where we can have a trapezoidal waveform. That is, we can increase the uh, loading at a particular rate and keep it constant for some time and then decrease it at a rate. So this test was done with a waveform having one second loading and then two second recovery period. So again, this was done at a low deviatoric level of 200 kPa at a confined and unconfined stage. And again, the entire data was uh, we were able to capture and. So this is how the data looks like. Uh, so I just wanted to show two data that we have collected. One is at 50 degrees Celsius for an unconfined specimen. And this is 60 degrees Celsius at 200 kPa confinement. You can see that here the material has reached the tertiary stage, whereas the material is in the uh, primary or secondary stage only. So what is important here is that you collect the data, any protocol can give you a number called a flow time or a flow number. But it is essential for you to understand whether it has actually reached that tertiary stage or not. So post-processing, again we tried out different post-processing methodologies other than the four, one that I, the four numbers that I discussed. This one was a variable sampling rate approach where we have done a numerical differentiation and a five point averaging of the data was done. And then the minimum strain rate value of the smoothened creep rate data was collected as the flow number. And another one was an Australian road research approach where different filtering methods were used so as to remove the noise. And this is a set of results. As I said, we have conducted it only for VG30 and CRMB on a trial basis. We see that the different approaches, this is the flow number values. The different approaches is showing us different uh, values, like 6,055 in one method, um, using one method and the 10,000 in the second method. Again, in this methods, what we have seen is that the, the methodology is actually going and picking up some local minimum strain rate that is happening in the data, again due to the noise of the data, which is inevitable as I mentioned. So we looked in for any other method which we can use. So there was a Prangin model which actually can capture the three stage creep response. This Prangin model was used to uh, capture the response of the three stages of the curve and the curve could, uh, so this model was able to distinguish between a primary only curve or a primary and secondary curve or a primary, secondary and tertiary curve together. And this is some of the results that we have obtained for this VG30 and CRMB mix. So to summarize and conclude, the bituminous mixtures produced using PMB plastoma exhibited more resistance to deformation than any other uh, mixture made of any other binder as part of this project. Uh, this was the ranking that we have got uh, based on the rutting performance of the mixtures, which is PMB plastoma, then followed by PMB elastoma, then CRMB and VG30 with slight change in the ranking between PMB elastoma and CRMB at high temperatures. Uh, and also we have seen that there is an, uh, this is identical response at uh, both 50 degree and 60 degree uh, when we have tested using the existing uh, flow number test protocol. But there is considerable differences about the onset of this primary stage, secondary stage, tertiary stage, etc. And also we have to look into various aspects such as loading condition, confinement condition, whether there is any nonlinear regimes existing in this kind of test protocols and so on. And uh, to conclude, uh, we need to go for, for a model based strategy wherein the exact behavior of this material can be captured and uh, we at IITM are working on it. So thank you. I would like to thank uh, DST for this funding and also IPC Global for uh, helping us tweaking with the various uh, test protocols to uh, do these kinds of uh, interesting uh, tests. Thank you. <laughs>